And what that does is it allows you to grow tomatoes like I did here in the very cold temperatures where normal tomatoes won't set fruit and in very warm temperatures, very, I mean hot temperatures, above 100 degrees, they'll still set. This is a dwarf plant today. You can see on the bottom here, a nice beautiful shaped tomato and the sepals, the little pointy part that comes out of the flower here is cut, meaning that I either emasculated it or cut the bud in half, probably emasculated. And that's the way I tell if it's Parthenocarpic or not. It's one of the indicators. The true indicator is when I cut that in half, which I'm going to do. And if there's no seeds, that's a definitive Parthenocarpic tomato because tomato will not grow without seeds normally. Um, I'd say 99.99% of tomatoes will not grow without being pollinated. And so there's um, some examples that can. It's uh, called, it, it's a Parthenocarpy and it's what I'm developing here. This is, as far as I know, the first true Parthenocarpic dwarf, um, as validated hopefully by cutting that tomato in half, which we're going to do, like I said. So, anyway, it's a pretty good uh, example of a dwarf. This is the second generation, and that's when Parthenocarpy and dwarfism shows up when you make a cross. In this case, I crossed one of my Parthenocarpic lines with uh, named Brandy Bear with. Um, another dwarf tomato and uh, brandy bear is a tall indeterminate and the other one was a dwarf so the dwarfism shows up about 25 percent in the second generation and so this is the second generation and parthenocarpy also shows up roughly about 25 percent so getting both parthenocarpy and dwarfism you have to grow a lot of tomatoes to get both so this example um, it's got really good fruit set. The tomatoes aren't huge, but I'm also growing it indoors over the winter, and so that might affect it some. All right, I'm uh, using my GoPro, and I can't see um, the screen like I can with, like I used to could with my uh, can of Vixia. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get a weight on this. It's not going to be very much. It's a pretty small tomato. Let me give you a look of it. At it. It's gorgeous in every way, shape and everything. It's just small. So, um, let's see here. Bumping the camera. All right. So, let's see here. It's set to ounces. And that is... 2.12 ounces pretty small and the next generation which will be the third generation i'll select for size and among the same type of qualities so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it open we're going to look for seeds and that's really about it normally i do a bricks test and a um, to check the quality of the fruit and um, i also do um, what else did i do a taste test Okay, that's kind of what I thought here. I'm going to stand up so I can make sure the tomato is in the camera here. You can see here that there is no seed, and they would normally be here in what's called the locules, and the locules are filled with gel. This is the meat. I think it's actually called placenta, but that's kind of gross, but I think that's what it's called. And the locules... Maybe the local gel is placenta. But anyway, uh, the tomato has no seeds in it. We only have one seed here, I think. Damn it. Yep, we have one seed. That kills the... Here, my last video, or the part you just watched, was about two weeks ago. 
and these dwarf plants have been a little bit frustrating to be honest with you because they're setting a lot of fruit and that last video as you saw um, it had one individual seed in it and so I didn't feel that was a presentable thing to you to show you that it's part of the carpet because it has a seed in it. Uh, well, that changed today. I did harvest some fruit, but instead of filming it because I wasn't just 100% sure that they were part of the carpet, I've just been cutting the fruit. So I'm cut, I've cut the fruit today and I can show you an example of some part of the carpet um, with these plants and I'm sure that they're part of the carpet now. So let me turn around and show you what the plant looks like today, and then we'll cut that fruit open. This is the, the one we're going to cut today, and it's got a lot of fruit on it. And I cut, I think, three off today. And um, this one, I, I think I emasculated it, and it's going to take another two or three weeks for that one's even ready to ripen. Um, but I also back crossed it to brandy bear here. So this tomato right here is a back cross to brandy bear, which was one of the parents to this plant. And so what back crossing should do, because now I know I have parthenocarpy and I know that it's a dwarf. Now I can back cross to, to parthenocarpic parent brandy bear. And I know that the, the cross the the generation or the seed will have parthenocarpy in the first generation so all i have to select for is um is uh dwarfism and so with dwarfism in the second generation i'll be guaranteed a um a parthenocarpic dwarf plant that is not only brandy bear parent but because i back crossed it it is a lot more like brandy bear than the dwarf parent itself that I began with. And so what I'm hoping to get out of this, see these tomatoes here? They're not very large. I think they're like four ounces. So what I'm hoping to do is get up to around eight or 10 ounces on a dwarf plant and that'd be pretty awesome. All right, uh, like I mentioned, these tomatoes, I did not start filming for cut from the beginning, but I've got them cut uh, in half here. Um, already and kind of reassembled so you can get the general idea that it was from the dwarf plant but um, so yeah I grabbed the these three fruits that were semi ripening I just cut them and I was gonna toss them if they had seed in it and wait for the first one uh, to come along that didn't have seed and then film it for you but uh, that happened in this case and I'd already cut them so um i just actually i just got a little lazy i just get and a little frustrated because dwarf plants weren't presenting seedless fruit so uh i thought i would take this chance to uh, get these cut them open a little bit more for you and and finish off the part two of the dwarf plants to show that in fact um, parthenocarpy did impart on this dwarf plant Okay, so here is the first one I cut. Maybe this was the first one I cut. And this first one, I think it was this one. And it had one seed, as you can see over here. And so, that, as you can imagine, the first one I cut open had a seed in it again. It was frustrating. But we'll cut this one open again to see if there's any more seed. Yeah, it looks like there's a seed here as well. And when I'm unsure, I just take and put it out on the napkin here and and press it if it doesn't crush into nothing then it's a seed like that's a seed and that's a seed so there's no point in really cutting this open so you can see more other than you'll see that there was only probably like two seeds in this not many I'll go ahead and do it why not okay I've looked throughout this entire one so this well, maybe here. Nope. This entire tomato had two seeds in it. And normally if a tomato, any other tomato has one or two seeds, they gener generally don't grow. So your fruit you get that you grow in a garden, it's going to have lots of seeds usually. And um, one of the indicators of parthenocarpy at times too is very few, one or two or very, very few seeds. That's part of the overall parthenocarpy thing. 
Uh, but for the most part, what the ideal situation is, zero seeds at all. That is how you know for sure, because a tomato will not grow unless it has seed in it in most cases. There's rare circumstances where they will, uh, a regular tomato will abort seed and somehow it still manages to grow. But in most of those cases, people think they have a seedless fruit and if they cut it open really thoroughly, they'll find a seed or two. But anyway, so this half right here, or this piece right here has zero seeds. It's also very, very meaty, um, which isn't really saying much in the overall scheme of things because um, oftentimes a parthenocarpic tomato will have more meat than gel because it doesn't have to develop the seed. But not always. You'll see like in this one that there's gel. Okay, so I'm looking in this one here. This is a second tomato, as you can tell from here to here is another tomato. And it was the second one I cut open, the less ripe. And I was working towards the ripe one um, in case I wanted to film it. So this one has, it's very, very meaty, hardly any gel. And it has zero seeds in it at all. So uh, dwarf tomato confirmed parthenocarpic with this tomato this one i cut it in half i didn't see seed in it yet but it's got the more developed tomato look it, because it's riper and it's a beautiful well it's not beautiful but it's a better looking tomato um see like this this is part of the other parent this long scar here i'm hoping the back cross will get rid of that it's also misshapen some which is a quality of heirlooms and brandy bear i hope will improve the uniformity of the roundness of the shape and the depth and all that kind of stuff so let's take a look at this tomato and i'm going to get behind the camera so i can see that you can see here let me touch the screen so it gets brighter okay so you can see there nice and close that there doesn't appear to be any seed in here but we're going to cut it open further it's also very very meaty the locules don't have a lot of gel or and they're small because of seed but there could be seed in this tomato just like any other person who cuts a tomato in half and they don't see seed uh, they may think it's a seedless fruit and um, a seedless fruit does not mean it's part the plant's parthenocarpic parthenocarpia means it produces tomato without seeds consistently okay so let's cut this open and we'll see if there's any seed in this one breeding almost everything's to brandy bear these de these days because brandy bear is a an absolutely excellent tomato it tastes so good it's very rich it's very creamy it's got tons of tomato punch in and uh, consistently time after time and so if i can impart those qualities some of the good positive of those qualities then i'm gonna do it Okay, I didn't see any seed yet, but we'll take a look here. There's none in that one. Tasting it. Oh man, that's really sweet. I might get a bricks on it. There's none in this one. There's none in this one piece. None in that one. None in that one. None there, none, and none. So this tomato and this tomato, two of these three were completely seedless and this one only had two. So let me get a Brix because that tasted really good. <laughs> it was really good. You could tell the brandy, the brandy bears in it. So I'm gonna get a Brix on it and I'm anticipating it's gonna be above five with the taste oh my gosh no way that is seven that's higher than the brandy bears i've grown um this year all i mean through the through the winter 22 and 23 
That's seven. I knew it was sweet. It was instantly sweet when I tasted it, and it's easy to detect. And it had root, rich taste as well. And this tomato could have ripened a little bit more even. So I don't know exactly why it's so sweet. It, it may be in such a high bricks. It may be that it that because it's closer to summer, the sun coming through the poly panels is is really gen energizing the tomato fruits and giving it better quality. Or if the fact that it's a little bit smaller fruit um, or just the genetic cross of the two. But anyway, this is very, very good. Oh, dang it, I lost that one on the floor. I wanted to eat it. Hmm. <laughs> See, a seven is a high bricks. That's a cherry tomato um, sugar level. And these are about four ounces. Mmm. That's really good. It may be worth just keeping this cross, not bred back to Brandy Bear, keeping a line going of just this cross. And then another one grown, uh, cross back to Brandy Bear because it's so good and so sweet. I mean, would you want a tomato that's, that's this good and don't mind that it's a little smaller? A little irregular, irregular in shape. Oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> it's surprisingly good. Mm. I'm chewing here. That's why the delay. Okay, that's it for the the um, dwarf part two and final of the dwarfs. And this is just to show that uh, Parthenocarpy, my Parthenocarpy, I call it Pat B, P A T dash B some boy can impart into absolutely any other line very very easily and what that does is it allows you to grow tomatoes like i did here in the very cold temperatures where normal tomatoes won't set fruit and in very warm temperatures very i mean hot temperatures above 100 degrees they'll still set and no tomatoes do that even the ones that are bred for uh, the high heat. I'm talking mostly beefsteaks here because cherry tomatoes can do some amazing things, but they're so tiny. But the beefsteaks, uh, even cherry tomatoes stop fruiting. I've had several that I've grown that stop fruiting in the high heat above 95. But anyway, yeah, back to it. These uh, Parthenocarpi, the biggest benefit is they can grow in any season the tomato plant will grow itself. So a freeze will kill a tomato. Uh, anything where it hard freezes will kill the tomato. So obviously if the plant doesn't survive, the tomato fruit's not going to survive. Any, anytime it doesn't get water or bugs attack it to an nth degree, you know, and it's just absolutely tearing the plant apart, the bugs or the disease, then of course the fruit set's going to suffer. But if the plant is doing is healthy and robust, Parthenocarpy will make sure that a tomato will grow for you. And that's what's so amazing about this tomato. How long do we gotta stay here For people we don't know in one lines All of the clothes are designer Fast cars and who knows who Yeah, I know what they wanna say Be real.